This is a native Power BI visual. It's the clustered bar chart, and this tutorial is going to walk you through how to make this, but you won't have to write any DAX because everything that you need will be in the description of this video. This is using the overlapping column feature from the 2024 February Power BI update, as well as error bars to get three charts in the space of one visual. This chart attempts to follow international business communication standards, and as you can see, we are remarkably close. If you want to see how to do this vertically instead of horizontally, you can check out my previous video, which shows you how to do exactly that. So let's dive right in. Now, if you've seen my past couple of videos, you may have seen this part already. We're just going to go down to the description, copy the data, go into a new Power BI desktop report, click on enter data, and we're going to hit enter once, press control V, and we're going to rename the table IBCS data. Once that's done, we're just going to click on edit and that should take us to the power query where we only need to split by column by delimiter. Make sure the delimiter is comma, press OK, and then hit the transform tab and click use first row as headers twice. Once that's done, we're going to go to home tab, close and apply, and we should have all of the data that we need. Now we're also going to bring in all of the DAX measures. And because I don't want you to write 29 different DAX measures, I just have them here. You can just copy all of these measures right now. And what you need to do is you need to control C and go into a text editor like Notepad++. <clears throat> the reason for doing that is because this text actually doesn't have any operators, so greater than or less than operators, simply because YouTube doesn't allow me to put that in the description. So kind of a pain, but this 30 second, uh, you know, it's a transformation will save you a lot of time. So once you're here in Notepad++, press Control A, and you can take all of the squares and make them greater than. Replace all, and then we're going to do the same for the black, black circles. So Control H with this highlighted, and then make this less than. Once we do that and we replace all, this is actually now perfect. We're going to uh, Control A, copy all of this, go into your Power BI desktop. For this to work, you have to make sure that you are using the February version, because otherwise you may not have DAX query view. And if you don't have DAX query view, you may need to go into your options and turn it on in your preview settings. So once you click the options, uh, you know, it's like button here, go to your preview features, and it should be DAX query view right here. Make sure that this is turned on for you. And once that's done, you can go to the DAX query view right here and just paste it right in. Once you've pasted it in, there will be all of these different update model values. You just need to click on all of these. And once you do, you'll have all of the measures that you need in your data model. Now, while this seems like it does take a lot of time to just add these in, it, it will be less time than writing all of the measures. So I hope you're with me so far. Now that we have all of the measures that we need, we, all we need to do is just go into the report view and we're going to start making this visual. Select the clustered bar charts and you can basically start adding things to it. Now let's go in and try to understand the data before we do that. In the table view, you can actually see that the data itself is going to be month number, month 2022, which is going to be past year data, 2023, which is going to be present year data, and 2023 predictions, which is going to show data only for November and December. In this scenario, you're going to be in the mid-October. And even though month, because it's a continuous data value, is not something that you would normally use for a bar chart, I'm electing to use this data set because that way people, if they want to use the previous video, the, the video that I made for the column tutorial, they can use the same data sets and a lot of the same uh, measures in order to make this bar chart. <clears throat> now, first, let's just order the month by the month number, and then we're going to take the month and add that to our Y axis. Once that's done, I'm going to add AC, FC, and PY into our X axis. That's already a little bit closer to what we want to see. AC here, just like I mentioned before, is going to be actuals for 2023 data. FC is going to represent forecast, it's, and it's going to be the 2023 predictions data. And PY is going to be show past year, so the 2022 data. Once we have all of these in here, oh, pardon, I think put AC twice, then we can actually start formatting already so that we can have a little bit of the information that we want to see. If you remember, this is what we're trying to achieve. And the data we've just put in is going to be these bars right here. So let me make this a little bit wider. And what we're going to do is we're immediately going to start formatting this. Open your format pa uh, pane and scroll down to bars. And when you're at bars, make sure that you scroll with the series set to all to the overlap. 
If the series is not set to all, the overlap, which is in the layout section, is actually grayed out and you can't select this. But once you have the overlap option turned on, you can set the space between series to be something like 50%. And you can see that now the different bars are la overlapping each other, which is really great. Now we're just going to go in and change the colors of these bars quickly. So we'll click on actuals and that's going to be black, but a lighter black, 20% lighter. We're going to go to pass here. We're going to set the color to be white with a border, which is basically all that we need. And we're going to go to forecast. We're going to set this to be light blue and the border is going to be dark blue. So once you've set all of that, what you can do is open up the um, build a visual pane once again. And you might want to change the orders because right now you can see that the past year is in the forefront. And to move it into the background, you just need to change the order of this. You'll actually realize that the order of the measures on the axis is very important, but we'll get into that in more detail later. Now, once we've done all of this, what we're going to do next is to make sure that we actually have labels. Now, there's a couple of different ways that you can put labels in. For example, you can just go into data labels in the format pane, just turn them on. But there is a problem here, which I've highlighted before, that if you turn the labels on just at this level, it will show data, but um, for the different bars, it will show them either at the very top or around the edge of each value. Some of these values can be a little bit harder to see. And there are options that you can use in the data labels. For example, you can add a background. I believe you can add a background to some of the units you know, like labels like so to make it a little bit easier to see. But due to the fact that they are just kind of here, it is a little bit obscured. Now, in order to avoid this, what I've done is in the measures. So one thing you'll also see is that all the measures are numbered because that's the order that we're going to go through them in. So we have a max value here. This max value is a little bit difficult to read if you look at it like this, but basically it's just trying to identify what's the max value for each month or for a bar chart, it would be which category. So right now, this is a condition that's added because in the data set itself, you can see that we have some data for 2023 and some data for 2023 predictions. And by simply using the conditional formatting to see if the forecast value is blank or not, it'll know whether to compare actuals versus past year or the past year versus forecast when forecast is not blank. Now, once you've actually found this out, you can actually put this value in the visual itself. And we're going to add that directly to the X axis. Why am I doing this? Because once I've added this here, I can actually go into the bars and set that color to be 100% transparent. When, once it's 100% transparent, I can actually use this to be the um, location for where my measure labels are going to be. So for data labels, I'm actually going to go into all of the other items. So the past year actuals and forecast and turn them all off. And for my max value, I'm actually going to use this scroll down a little bit, go to the value option. And in the value option here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this into a different value by taking this max value here. I can actually make sure that I can put this information as either max value or anything else that I want. Max value is actually okay for now. So I'm going to leave that and I'm going to include the detail option. Now the detail is basically a different value that you can add as a label as well. And I'm going to add this value, which is the minimum value, which if you can see right here, the only thing that's different between the minimum value and the maximum value is the operators. Basically, it's just identifying which is the smaller value for each column. So this is the minimum value. This is the maximum value. As you can see, it's just the operators. So with this minimum value, I'm going to put that into this data field here. And now you can see that you have both the minimum value and the maximum value. Okay. I can actually see that I want this to be the opposite way. So I'm going to put the maximum value in the detail so that it's to the right and the minimum value in the value section so that it's a little bit to the left. Now I have both of these values, which are going to show what the smaller value is and the larger value is. But even though I have all of this, it still needs something. It actually needs a little bit of color coding so that I can see very quickly which is the which value each value is referring to. Now, this isn't actually something that exists in the IBCS. The IBCS only shows the actuals, but this is just something extra that I decided to throw in. And you can also choose not to do this if it doesn't sit well with you. And in order to do that, I'm actually using 
the next measures, <coughs> the measures that are labeled number, three. it's called title color bot, which is just the minimum color and title color top, which is just the color for the higher value. The way that it's actually uh, going to calculate it is if it's not, uh, depending on if it's in the forecast area or not, we're going to use a uh, look at Delta PY. This Delta PY is simply the difference between the minimum and maximum value, which is just calculated a little bit differently, but it's just the minimum or maximum value subtracted by each other. And if that value is positive or negative, it'll either show a black color or a light gray color for the actuals and a light gray color or a blue color. Now let's actually see this in action because, you know, just looking at X codes is a little bit hard to understand. So we're looking at the minimum value here. So it's going to be the title color bot that we conditionally format. So I've pressed the conditionally formats button, the FX button, and we're going to go to field value, look for color, and we're going to select color bot. So if I press OK on here, now you can actually see that the colors are um, based around what it should actually show. So that's really great. We're going to also go to the detail option, go to the FX conditional formatting color here, and make sure that this is the color for top. Now, once that's done, the color differences are a little bit subtle. And that's the whole point because it you can't actually have white colors. Otherwise, it'd be really hard to see on a white background. But this will be enough for us to actually be able to very quickly tell what these values are. And it's not going to be obscured in the set itself. Now, the next thing to do is to make sure that we're actually going to be using the ACPY max value in the fourth section. Now the ACPY max value, which you see here is actually going to be a calculation, which is using the max X of all of the selected values and simply trying to find the max value. So what that actually means is okay, easier if I show you what it looks like. If I throw this in here, you can actually see that the ACPY max value is simply taking the max of all of the values in the visual right now. Since that's the case, it means that I can use this not in the value itself, but as a reference value in order to elongate the visual itself. Because as you remember, we're trying to get to here. If we only have the Y axis be up to here, we're not going to be able to see all this. So we need to make sure that the Y axis dynamically can change to this length. Now we're going to do this by going into the format pane once again and clicking on the X axis. Sorry, I said Y axis, didn't I? I meant the X axis. We're going to set the range to be zero, uh, the minimum range to be zero and the maximum to be Y axis max. This is going to be not uh, a field value, which is going to be just axis max. We're going to put that in. And the reason we're using this is this measure is simply the max value of the column length multiplied by 4.8. It's an arbitrary value. I found 4.8 works really well in order to get to here. But of course, you can play around with this hard coded value to suit your needs. Now, once we've sorted that out, all we need to do is start looking at section five. Delta PY is what we're going to be playing with. And like I said before, this is basically just the minimum value subtracted by the maximum value. Fine. But I wrote this before I wrote these other ones. So that's why it looks a little different. It's fair enough. Delta PY line, which is actually going to show these uh, differences between um, the forefront and the past year is going to be actually very similar to the Y axis max. We need a specific value which will show the mid value. So this will be representative of this line right here. And in order to do that, basically what you need to do is you're going to put the Delta PY line in a reference line, the reference, the reference line, which is in the format pane, you're just going to click on add line, you can actually choose whichever line you want, almost like the min minimum line, the maximum line, the average line and the medium line, they will all work. So we're just going to select max line. And we're going to call this the Delta PY line. Now in order to get the Delta sign, click on your windows and semicolon. And you should open up this emoji, uh, you know, it's like box. It's a little hard to see because, you know, um, okay, let me like scroll down a little bit so you can see a bit better. So I'm going to click windows and semicolon again, and you can see that there is this emoji, uh, window that opens up. You're going to click on symbols and you can generally find the Delta here. If you don't have it under recent, of course, you can just scroll through until you find Latin symbols because Delta is, I think a Latin symbol. Now don't quote me on that. I don't remember exactly. <laughs> But it should be here somewhere and you should be able to find it. So if I go back and I just select the Delta sign, I'm going to put Delta PY 
as the line name and I'm going to make and you can see that the Delta PY line has now shown up here. That's uh, that's fine. This is actually just showing the max line of the series right now. But what I want to do is I want to make sure that the series is set to not any of these. I'm going to actually need to put the Delta PY line into the X axis. And now the series that I want to use Delta PY line will be visible. We're going to also go back and make sure that the Delta PY line is transparent in just a second, but we can go to the line and make sure that the color is a gray and make sure that the style of the line itself is solid. We're going to put the position in front. That's fine. And we're also going to turn on the data label. And for the data label, we're going to call it, uh, how do you say it? left above? That's totally fine. If you choose right, then you can see that it just moves a little bit here and or there. We're going to keep it on the left. We're going to keep the position above. You do have the pos uh, option of putting it below instead of above, but I think above looks much better. And instead of the data value, we're going to put the name. And now you can see it's called Delta PY. We'll put the color as just solid black. <clears throat> and that's all we need. Now, in order to make this look a lot better, we're going to go back, close the reference line options, go back to the bars and make sure that the Delta PY line bar is transparent 100%. And there you have it. This is basically what we're going to use. We also do need to make sure that the data label value for Delta PY line is turned off. And we have the line that is going to be used for this. Now, this is actually really great because we can just go back here and start using this and put in error bars in order to show these, uh, you know, it's like extra lines on this chart. The error bars that we're going to use are actually going to be part of this uh, underscore five category. And there is actually something that you need to know right now, which is that unfortunately, error bars do not have the option for conditional formatting. So if I put in just a bar right here, let me just show you quickly. When you turn on an error bar, we you have to select the actual series. So we're going to go to the Delta PY line, enable that, put in a field. So I'm just going to th throw in, you know, it's like something right now. And you can actually see that this is a bar looks good. But unfortunately, the bar color does not have conditional formatting. So if you want to have the negative values to be red and the positive values to be green, you actually need to have two error bars. And there, therefore, you need to have multiple lines to, uh, to actually uh, carry those error bars. Now, these multiple lines are actually, as you can see, just the exact same as Delta PY line. So I've got Delta line two, Delta line three, but we need to have all of these in here. And, you know, we're just going to skip through the formatting a little bit. Basically, I'm just turning off the data labels, making the bars transparent. Now that's done, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I go to the error bars themselves and we're going to start making sure that we put in the negative values and the positive values as well as the negative and positive values for uh, the line FC. We actually need to have four different measures in order to pull this off. And you could probably do this in a different way. But the reason that we have four is that in your error bars, what you put as upper bound and lower bound actually matters for where the label is going to. Be. So for now, you can see that in Delta PY line, I've put in the negative AC value. Now, this is just all of the values where the Delta PY is negative. So that means that the current year is greater than, pardon me, current year is actually less than, you know, it's like the past year. Uh, so you can actually see where the past year is the larger number. For all of these values, it's actually going to show, you know, it's like this. But the interesting thing here is that if I remove this from the upper bound and add it to the lower bound, what it's going to do is still show exactly the same. The only significant difference is that if I go down to the error labels, if I have it on the lower bound, it will show in, you know, it's like outside the value. And if I have it on the upper bound, will show inside the value. Now this is, uh, you know, it's a kind of does make sense. The upper bound is if we actually have the upper bound as a positive value instead of a negative value as it's showing right now, then if you put something on the upper bound, then the value will, for example, let's take the positive AC in the upper bound. You'll actually see that the value is going to be at the front. Now this is a little bit confusing to think about on a bar, but if you think about it from a a column point of view, if it's positive, if it's on the upper bound, the label is going to be above the actual point. And if it's on the lower bound, the label will be below the point. So using this, you can actually just go into negative AC, make sure it's on the lower bound. And 
<clears throat> that's all you need to know. The bar, we're actually going to change the color a little bit. We're going to make it red. We're going to make the width a uh, size 10. And we're going to make sure that the marker is not there and that the border size is zero. Now, once we do this, we have a really nice, uh, you know, it's like bar, which is going to be great. You can choose to go into your error labels and match the color. Uh, you know, it's like uh, of the actual label to the bar. I choose to do this because I do like, you know, it's like how it looks, but you don't necessarily have to. I know that IBCS at the very least doesn't do that. We're going to continue onwards to Delta line P2 in the error bars. And here we're going to add positive AC. Now let's take this moment to actually talk about what uh, these values are. So for negative AC, so if you are in a, if the forecast is blank, so you're in a non forecast period and the difference is actually negative, then we're going to take this line right here, Delta PY line and add the difference to it. So if this is negative, then it's going to be, of course, in the red. And this is called Delta PY line negative AC. So for actuals, so if, you know, it's like this is blank, then it's going to show this here. The reason we do that is because we want the uh, forecast bars to be a different color. Uh, you can actually see right here, we want them to be blue. And in order to actually achieve different colors, it needs to be a different error bar every time. Now, if you weren't going to use these forecasting values, then you would actually not need to go to the extent that I'm going. You probably could just cut out two measures uh, here and another measure here. So probably take care of six different measures just off the top of this. But in any case, since we are trying to show you forecasting values as well, um, this is what the negative value is. And conversely, positive is only showing the one difference here. Okay, let me show this properly. Where the only difference is if it is positive, then it's going to show this exact same value. And of course, in the for the forecast, it's simply showing the other condition instead of if it is blank, it's showing the value. If the forecast is not blank, it's showing that value. And that's basically the way to think about it. And but you can also see that even though I have four different error bar measures here, delta line three. Uh, I only have three PY lines and I'll get to that in just one second. So let's just continue formatting Delta line two. We've turned it on. We put it on the upper bound. We're going to put in our data labels and we're going to make sure that the bar is green. Now just select any green. It doesn't really matter. You know, it's like just pick a nice green. And once you've selected the bar, make sure that the width is 10. 10 is the maximum width that you can use. So, you know, it's like you can't go far beyond that. Set the marker to be none and set the border size to be zero. Now this is a nice and clean green. Maybe it's too green. Let, let me just change that a little bit. <clears throat> and now you can see that the error labels are in the right place. We can make sure that the error labels are actually the same green. And one thing that you'll want to do is the label format right now is says absolute. You want to change this to relative numeric. And what that means is it's going to show what the value is relative to the starting point. So Delta PY line. And this is important because now you can see that the value here is showing 4,000, 4, which is the, in, in fact, the difference between 3,000 and 7,000. And you don't actually want to show 38,000, which is, of course, the difference between this plus this value right here, which is, of course, um, the maximum of this column multiplied by 4.8 or something, 2.3. That's not what you want to show. You do want to go and make sure that the error bar labels are formatted correctly that it shows the label format as the relative numeric value. Now let's go to Delta PY line three. And because this is going to be the same color, we actually don't need two different lines. We can just use one single line to do it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to enable this, make sure that I have the positive FC and the negative FC, and I'm going to put the negative FC into the lower bound and positive FC into the upper bound. Turn on error labels and you can see that it works great. Now, just just to, you know, really hammer it in, if I put negative FC in the upper bound and positive FC in the lower bound, you can see that the labels are not where they're supposed to be. I do want them on the outside. So just keep this in mind. So now let's go and make the bar color a blue, make the width 10, the marker shape to be none, put the marker size, uh, well, the marker size doesn't matter, put the border size to be zero, and make sure the error labels match the color if you want to do that. With that changed, now we've actually come to a place where we've completed two parts of the chart. Now, the third part is actually going to be very similar to just making the second part, but there is one difference. 
In my previous video, I actually didn't do use this technique, but I've updated the code in the description of that video as well to follow what I'm about to show you now. Before, I was just using the flat value and changing the labels, but that doesn't necessarily make sense and is not really aligned with IBCS. But and to be truly aligned, this actually has to show percentage difference as a you know it's like a value that's a little bit harder to pull off. But I do manage by using uh, you know it's like some different DAX measures to do it pretty well. <clears throat> now, in order to do this, we're actually going to make sure that what we're looking at is delta py percentage. So that's going to be this value, the actual change since the last year, divided by the past year values. So it'll be basically the values on this second, uh, you know, it's like chart here, divided by what the past year was. So it'll be a percentage relative increase or decrease. Using this, we're actually going to add, uh, you know, a couple lines as well. So the delta py percentage line, and we're going to use three of them here. Now you can see it's multiplied by 3.8 as compared to this, which was 2.8. I'm going to start adding these into the x axis line one, two, and three. And I'm going to make sure I format them into be transparent with no data labels. Now that we've actually turned all of that off, what we're going to do is we're simply going to make sure that this actually has a reference line as well. So we're going to add another reference line. A nice thing to do is just click on the existing reference line, copy the name, because that's really what we're going to use. And once you've copied it, add a line, name it the same thing, but add a percent. Now you can choose whatever line as well, you know, max line, that's fine. Select the series delta py percentage line, make the line gray, not at all transparent and make it solid. So, okay. So I think I did not change the transparency before. So let's just keep it at 50% to be aligned with this one and include the data label. Make sure that the color is black and that this, uh, the data value, no, the, sorry, the style is the name. And now you can see you've got a Delta PY and a Delta PY percentage. <clears throat> now close the reference line section, open up error bars, and we're going to slowly start adding error bars into this. Uh, basically what you got to think about is that here, the way that we're calculating the error bars are actually very, very similar. <clears throat> and basically what we're going to do is use three different items. The way that the error bars are calculated is almost identical to these different, uh, to what we used for Delta PY as for PY percentage. The only difference is that now we're actually not going to use the labels here. The reason for that is if we actually put in the labels. Let me show you. If we go to Delta PY percentage line and we put in positive AC, for example, we enable the options and we put in the error label. The error label, if we show it as a relative percentage, is going to show different values than what we expect because this is going to be a value that's relative to the past year percentage line. That's not actually what we want to show. What we want to show is what is the percentage increase or decrease of, uh, you know, what is this as a percentage of past year? So you can't, you can't actually use error labels because you are not able to change the value here. So we actually have to use a slightly different workaround. So let's just start by putting in the bars. Because you're not using labels, it really doesn't matter if you put it in upper bound or, you know, it's like lower bound. Let's just go and do it. So now this is upper. We're going to change the bar color to be green. Make sure that the width is two and that the marker shape is a square. This is uh, something that they use in international business communication standards to be representative of the relative change. So you can see this is a flat change and this is the relative change. Then we're going to go to the next line add, uh, you know, it's like enable the error bar, put in negative AC as the upper bound, make the bar color be red, the width be two, and the marker shape be a square. Fantastic. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go to line three and put in just the line FC into the upper bound. And once we do that and enable it, you can actually see it goes to both. We'll go change the bar color to be, you know, it's like blue. We'll set the width to two and the marker shapes to a square. Now let's, let me explain what this is and why it's slightly different from what I did in my previous video. So here, we, uh, let's take a look at the forecast value. If the forecast value is blank. So if it's supposed to be one of the actuals, it does just doesn't show anything, but it's going to take the Delta PY percentage line here and add the percentage difference. So whether it's positive or negative, but multiply that by a modifier. 
It's called the percentage bar modifier, and it's only used here, and it's at the very bottom. So if we go and look at that, the percentage bar modifier, the way that it's working, is it's actually taking the ACPY max, which is the value here, the maximum value of all columns, and taking the maximum value of all percents. So the max of all of the percentage differences and multiplying that by 0 0.7. The way that it's working is it's essentially trying to figure out how do we get the maximum length of this bar to be only as big as the maximum length of this bar. And in order to do that, it, you know, it's like this is the calculation that I came up with. 0 0.7 is here so that there are, is some space left over for the actual text. You could probably do away with this and make the whole length a little bit longer, but I've elected to do it this way and it works just fine. So with this bar modifier, we're going into the FC error bars length again, and we're just taking this line uh, length and adding the percentage of the bar multiplied by the modifier. Because this is a regular, um, you know, it's like a static length for each different column, it's going to show the correct percentages here and there. But now the last part remains, which is to simply add the values to here. And in order to do that, you, I'm actually electing to do it in kind of a roundabout way because I can't add any new values to these bars. I'm going to go and add a new bar. It's going to be called Delta label percentage vowels. And this one's a little bit convoluted, but bear with me. If the, <clears throat> basically what it is, is it's going to take, uh, so maybe t let's look at the bars. So if the Delta PY percentage is negative, so if this is in the negative zone, then it's going to show <clears throat> the Delta PY line percent here, multi uh, multiplied by a small modifier to make space for a little bit of a values plus delta py percent multiplied by, by the percentage modifier. What this means is that if it's negative, the bar will come to just around here, just to, uh, you know, it's like before the bar to make space for the actual, um, you know, it's like label. And if it's positive, it's just going uh, to stop exactly where the bars are. And let's show you what that looks like. Looks like this. So you can actually see that uh, the data label here is exactly what I'm trying to achieve. So the data label just turns on automatically when you add something to the X axis as a bar. And this is what I'm trying to do. Now I can see that it's not exactly right. So if I want to go and change that, I can change this 0 0.92 modifier to be maybe something like 0 0.4 and it'll be a little bit closer to the bars. Let's, let's make that even 95 for now. This can change. Uh, you might need to change this value based around, you know, it's like how big the visual is. For example, if you make the visual a lot smaller, you can see that it, it encroaches on itself. And, you know, it's like that's not something that you can automatically find because there's no way to get the size of the visual inside DAX, unfortunately, at least not that I know of. So if that's something that you want to do, then you might still have to change this value. You know, it's like manually. But once you do, uh, it will still go pretty naturally. Now, once that's done, we are going to make sure that the bar color is transparent once again. <clears throat> and once that is transparent, we're going to go into the data label, make sure that we select the percentage values. And once we're at the percent values, we have an actual label that I've decided to use. This label is going to be the Delta PY percent multiplied by 100. Now going into this label, go, uh, you know, it's like, make sure in the format pane, you go into the value, select this label and just drag it in. Once you do, you might see that it doesn't actually show any values. That's okay. Make sure the display units is set to none and that the decimal places is set to zero. And now you can see the label is showing the percent, which is going to be the relative percentage difference, which is the Delta PY percent, which is the Delta PY divided by the past year actual value. Now, this is, of course, one final additional thing, which is that if you want, you can use this label color. If it is a forecast, it's going to be blue. If it's not forecast, depending on if it is positive or negative, it's going to show red or green. And you can use this in the conditional formatting of the data label in the field value and select that to color. And once you do that, the labels now will be colored similar to what, uh, you know, it's like the actual bars are. The final thing to do here is to close. Okay, so I'm going to close this panel for now is to make sure that you turn off the legend. 
The legend, you know, it's like here because you have so many things just doesn't make sense. And the workaround to actually add information that you want to show here about what these things are is to go into the title. So the title I'm just going to call IBCS multi-layer bar chart. And in the title section, you can turn on the subtitle. And this is basically what I like to do. I'm going to take the subtitle and I'm going to put in Delta PY. Uh, so I might, I might do it this way. Uh, we're going to basically just use the emoji screen. And if you go to the emojis, you can actually select if you, I believe this heart button right here, if you scroll down, there are circles and squares that you can use in order to put some uh, <clears throat> into make into making a fake legend. So these are some of the circles and here are some of the squares. I'm going to just put in these ones right here. And now that I have all the symbols that I need for the circle, I'm going to put in forecast. I'm going to press space twice in between, you know, it's like each item. So for uh, white, it's going to be past year, space, space. For the black one, it's going to be actuals, space, space. And then I'm going to put in delta PY space, space as well as delta PY percent. Now with this here, you can actually see that uh, this is very, very much a fake uh, legend, but it works in order to show people what these different values mean. You may also, of course, want to go into your actual X and Y axis and turn off the, you know, it's like values and title, and it just looks a little bit cleaner. You might want to do the same for Y axis, but depending on what you put in there, maybe you don't. And that's the video. I really hope that you learned something new today. Um, if you've already seen my previous column charts video, I apologize. Maybe this, a lot of this was very similar in content, but I hope at the very least that you were able to really understand why I'm using all of the different measures. This isn't for everyone. I do recognize that, but if you ever do need to make this in, at work, I really hope this video helps you out. Thanks for watching. Take care.